Brazil was there. Oh really? Oh really? Did he say anything? No, no. Well, Dan uh, was very good. Some, uh, 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 I called pets, him at the last minute and said, I'm going to go stand out there in the sun after this this morning. And I was really disappointed because I wanted to point out that this shows us the importance of taking a second look at what our government is doing and why they're doing it. You know, they said they were doing it to prevent a land invasion that our war-weary troops would have to make in Japan to end the war when they knew that Japan was suing for peace. All they wanted was to keep their emperor. And of course, we let them keep the emperor anyway. But uh, some of the scientists at the time were quite opposed, but other scientists felt that, well, we spent all this money and time and we developed this nice new weapon and we want to show Russia and the world that we've got it. And, and besides, Russia was coming in from the other side. We wanted to be the winners of World War II. Are you planning to question me? No, no, no. Oh. I was going to add to it, but, you know, go ahead. Well, <laughs> anyway, I was in Hawaii in the Marine Corps Women's Reserve typing when the victory came and we were all so excited. We just heard first it's the end of the war and of course the Marines and all were war weary from going from island to island and they were just so thrilled. And then the next day it came out that it had been ended by this terrible, this terrible new weapon. And I said, that's awful, you know. And my boyfriend at the time said, Seal, you're weird. <laughs> Amer Americans were so angry at the Japanese that they didn't care, you know. We'd lost so many troops and they had, uh, we were mad about Pearl Harbor. And some of the scientists had said at the time, if you want to show the weapons off, the more sensible scientist, I would say, which Al would have been on the side of, drop it out at sea and show them how terrible it is. Don't drop it on people. We even had some American prisoners there that were evaporated along with everybody else. And it wasn't just the, that they killed them, but it was a terrible death. Skin was peeling off, and the Hippocusha, who knows who the Hippocusha were. Well, they were able to uh, complete their uh, their experiments with the use of the weapon. Yeah, and, and they they had two weapons. I was just gonna say, in the second. Yes, yeah. and they, they only waited Nagasaki three days. They wanted today. to replicate the, the you know, scientific method. It needs to be replicated. I'm sure. They only waited three days. They didn't give the Japanese, who were in disarray after Hiroshima, a chance to formally we'll do whatever the hell we wanted them to do, and they just dropped it on the second city. So. Well, I was able to see uh, a rebroadcast of uh, Michelle Alexander's uh, speech. Oh. She, uh, uh, because Congress is out of town, uh, C-SPAN uh, yep. was, was running some uh, older sessions, yep. Yep. and this was a speech she gave at the University of Tennessee in January. Remind they, us about who she is. She's the one that she wrote, that, the, uh, book. wrote the, the new, book, uh, the new Jim, Crow. Jim Crow. Oh! And she spoke there the day after the King holiday. Mm -hmm. And um, I had not seen the beginning of her speech back the first time. This time I saw the whole thing. And she talked about the context of what she, her whole issue of the, the new Jim Crow was in the context of um, how we've sanitized the, the kids. drug laws. Uh, no, oh. no. Not, yeah. Good guess, Seal, but no. <laughs> I just jumped ahead. How they, they, they we've sanitized the the king image, you know, that, that the king image was this, you know, the dream image, you know. When we're, in reality, we're not racist. When in reality he was calling for some real serious practical change, both uh, in civil rights and in economic rights. And, and there has been some recent legislation in the last week, has there not, on, on uh, reevaluating mandatory drug sentences. Eric Holder came out, yeah. Right. So that's really important to follow too. So it's dovetailing very well with uh, with the new Jim Crow stories. Yes, yeah. I wish we could get that lady here to speak. <laughs> did it? Well, I did talk to. Uh, remember the plan, at least the, that I were putting forward was put together a program locally for where does Civil our community rights. fit locally into this? What are our policies and so forth? And. Um, I did uh, talk to the police chief. I ran into Larry. Him, uh, 
I ran into him this week, and um, I asked him if he'd heard of the, the book, and he said he's reading it now, and he said, guess who gave me the book? Seal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you lie. <laughs> Good. And um, so we <laughs> talked a little bit, and um, you know, I mentioned that we were planning a program. We we're going to be planning a program this fall, so on that, on the local policy. So and at least he has a heads up to deal with, you know, his end of it and uh, to make, you know, what, what are the city's policies in this regard, you know? So. And, and, and somebody look up, you're good on the internet and I'm not, look up about the recent moves to end these mandatory sentences. Well, that, that was, a, that hit the news this week because of uh, Eric Holder. Eric Holder called for a reevaluation of that. I mean, there are people who've been working on this, various groups and that, but they don't get attention. Eric Holder's statement caused it to be news. Does everybody understand what he's talking about with the mandatory sentences? Yeah. yeah. People are picked up for minor drug yeah. uh, violations, and, and then they are either going to go years in jail or they plead guilty to a felony, which really happened in my experience in defending one of Derek's boys one night. The lawyer tells him, will you either go to jail for umpteen years or you plead guilty? And once he's plead guilty to a felony, then the rest of his life he's not eligible for any benefits. He can't a get a job, he's ruined. Right. And, and Michelle Alexander went into some detail about that very yeah. point. And, sure. um, and she, she even gave a story of a guy who who uh, struggled to overcome all of that and was successful in overcoming all of that, which is pretty rare to be able to do that. And yet, even, and it, and it built a business. Um, he had uh, this business where he had been, it was a retail business, and he was carrying cash. So he looked into um, uh, the uh, issue of uh, carrying a gun because yeah. of carrying this cash from his business. So he went through all the proper channels and he got the wrong advice on this and um, um, ultimately um, he um, ended up uh, being uh, arrested for um, uh, possession of, uh, of the firearm because he had this record. This felony, this old, this old felony record, yeah. and the mandatory minimum. Um, I think fifteen it was, years. It was, it was like ten or fifteen years or something like that. Now here's a guy who had successfully done everything that that, that the uh, society wanted him to do, and and he even went into the police department um, as a part of the process. And when he did, all of a sudden they find, well, he's got a record and he's got a gun, and then now he's illegal. Mm. So, I mean, you know, it's not even something that, that he was trying to hide. But it was a mandatory minimum. And because of the circumstances, because it was a mandatory minimum, and the circumstances, the judge would have said, you know, no time, probation, or whatever, you know, because of the circumstances. But mandatory minimum, the judge couldn't do anything. So it's, it's a tragic Lowry story. had a meeting so with those. with the community this week. Uh, did anybody go? He's trying to involve the community in uh, he had policing. A this week. I called him and asked him how important it would be to go because I wasn't really feeling well. He he just said, "Well, you're welcome if you decide to come," but he didn't. So I was hoping somebody from here went. Who did he meet with? The community was open. He had an open meeting, he announced in the paper that uh, people could come in and he wanted to talk about involving the community and policing the community. I hope he's not talking about arming and <laughs> process. I don't think so. But well, it, if it was uh, after, if it was before Tuesday, then then I, that's understandable. But if it was after Tuesday, he didn't say anything to me about it when I talked to him on Tuesday evening. Well, anyway, look it up. And uh, so how many are going to come to my house tomorrow morning to the steering committee meeting? Well,
Segregated. <laughs> Oops. Okay. I'm walking over here. Nobody takes sides. And if you have something you want on the agenda, Steve is going to get an agenda up for you tonight. And uh, are you all on the list, sir? Well, without Lolly, do, do we, uh, how do we send that Howard out? Howard said he'd send it uh, based on the last email. If you can send it to me, I'll just take Lolly's email and reply all okay. and clear out the rest all of the right. email. I'll, I'll send it to Howard then. And are we meeting for co coffee and cake uh, prior to, to the, the, the meeting? What well, times are we deciding? Oh. I'd say we'll probably be closer to 10. Isn't that the usual time the meeting starts? Right, so if you want to do coffee at 9.30. 9.30. Okay, I'll do that. And I still owe you for the good evening of the last Oh, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I owe anybody money, you have to tell me. I can't remember. You can't remember. <laughs> seal, seal. That's, you, that's you convenient, know. seal. <laughs> you, you've, uh... Paid so many times over for, for the goodies. Well, feel free now with Lolly not uh, active among us. I, I remember, I don't remember dates, names, places, <laughs> directions, or where I put anything. So feel free to remind me. <laughs> My doctor says I, I, this, uh, this, I'm not admitting how confused I am, and I don't what else I need to admit, but I admit it. You should wear a sign. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember nothing. <laughs> okay, so we got a musician here that's going to.